Hi, good morning. You are watching Diksha Medical Ramana channel. Type Diksha Medical Ramana in YouTube search bar. Subscribe my channel and click bell icon for new updates. Hi, hello, good morning. May I introduce myself to M. Ramana. You are watching Diksha Medical channel. Today we are going to talk about on the basis of structure, the types of bones. Basically, in the last lecture we have talked about on the basis of functions, the long bone is divided into three parts. One is epiphysis, it forms the ends of the long bone. This epiphysis is meant for articulate with the another bone with the help of the articular cartilage. Along with that, it is meant for production of RBC because due to presence of red bone marrow, red bone marrow contains the myeloid tissue. Myeloid tissue is responsible for the production of RBC due to presence of myeloid stem cells. And second part is the metaphysis. Metaphysis, the basic character is presence of the epiphyseal plate. The epiphyseal plate represents, it helps the elongation of the bone. Whenever the epiphyseal plate is destroyed, the metaphysis slowly disappeared. Right? And third important part is the diaphysis. Diaphysis of long bone represents presence of yellow bone marrow, which responsible for storage of fat. Right? So, in the last class, we talked about on the basis of function, the structure of long bone is divided into three parts, epiphysis, metaphysis, diaphysis. Epiphysis meant for production of RBC due to presence of myeloid tissue and metaphysis meant for form the articular cartilage. This epiphysial, epiphysial plate is responsible for the growth of bones and diaphysis meant for storage of fat. These are the basic characters we talked in the last lecture. But now we are going to talk about types of bones on the based on structure. The bone is divided into two types. One is spongy bone, second one is a compact bone. What is a spongy bone? What is a compact bone? Right now we are going to explain about first type of bone on the basis of structure that is a spongy bone. Basically, spongy bone also known as cancellous bone or trabecular bone, right? Why it is called as a spongy bone? Because if you see the ends of the long bone, it is somewhat smooth like spongy nature. So that they have given as a spongy bone, right? Why they call as a trabecular? Because if you observe this area of spongy bone, that is nothing but ends of the long bone in the picture, the spongy that is nothing but the trabecular is arranged in the irregular form. Trabeculae in the sense it is look like a, a type of beam like structures or a pole like structures. Between the trabeculae a specialized marrow cavity is present that is called as red bone marrow. This red bone marrow responsible for production of blood. Okay. At the same time this spongy bone helps to give the protection to the compact bone. Right. So we have to see the clear idea about that. There is a difference between the spongy bone and compact bone, right? So, ends of the long bone form the spongy bone. See that? This is a spongy bone up to from here to here, from here to here. This is completely made up of spongy bone, right? So, where it is occur? It occurs in epiphysis and metaphysis of long bone. If you take the long bone, in that, the epiphysis and metaphysis of long bone is made up of spongy bone, right? And the diaphysis of long bone is called compact bone, right? This is the locations of the, a particular bone, right? What is the characteristic of spongy bone? It looks spongy and contain columns of bone called trabeculae. The nature of the this particular part, that is nothing but epiphysis and metaphysis part, contain a spongy-like structure. At the same time, it contain the columns of bones there is a beam like structures are there are pole like structures are present between the poles and poles or between the columns or between the trabeculae a irregular interspace is filled with the red bone marrow red bone marrow responsible for production of rbc right this rbc helps to provide the proper supply of nutrients to the compact bone that's why simply we can say spongy bone responsible for these spongy bones supply the nutrients to the compact bone then go for the compact bone second type of bone is called compact bone the diaphysis of long bone is called compact bone where it is present it is present between metaphysis and metaphysis you remember very clearly right the compact bone is present between the 
two metaphysis is called compact bone compact bone is nothing but is a shaft because the matrix of compact bone is arranged very tightly because it is made up of a regular concentric rings are a regular are concentric lamellae the matrix of compact bone is made up of different type of structures maybe it is a concentric lamellae maybe it is a valkman's canals maybe it is a haversian canals maybe it is a canaliculae and lacunas different type of structures helps to make the bone compact right so it has dense continuous lamellae matrix between periosteum and endosteum periosteum represents the outermost layer of the bone is called periosteum and endosteum is represents the innermost layer which is very close to the marrow cavity is called endosteum this is a periosteum this is endosteum right so this part is completely made up of compact bone that means it has a high dense mineralized tissue is present that we can call as a high mineralized matrix is present that matrix is made up of concentric lamellae lacuna canaliculus different type of canals haversian canals and valkman's canals these all togetherly called osteon right it is we can call as a structure and functional unit of the bone compact bone is nothing but osteon in the next lecture we have to talk about what is the function of osteon how it is formed that is simply we can say structure of the compact bone thank you